Hey guys, how you doing? This is JP Saricolia coming to you once again. And uh, today I have a, another book at review. And, and this time I want to just give a, a farewell uh, as a, a footnote, as an end note for the previous uh, series that I've been covering this month uh, for uh, Tomb Raider. Um, Tomb Raider, uh, of course, you know, we review the archives. So we finalized that uh, last week. But I want to uh, finish the entire series with this book, which I consider a, a must-have if you're able to get it because it's you know it's out of print and it's hard to get nowadays but I'm sure you can find it in some stores uh, online or perhaps in you know in a, you know some stores around your your neighborhood but uh, this is definitely one that will give you all the information all the extras that you need in order to um, to complement whatever you uh, you're reading through the comics he has a lot of information here which is very good and I really like this book it came out two years ago around the same time uh, the Rise of the Tomb Raider game came out uh, so it's, it's really a cool book with a lot of fun information a lot of detail uh, it was written by a fan for the fans so it has a lot of things it's not a perfect book and then we're gonna go in detail about this but definitely one that I, 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 I personally really uh, liked and enjoy uh, to read through um, when I receive it so here you have 20 years of Tomb Raider uh, digging up the past uh, defining the future very iconic figure of Lara Croft really like this here this is a coffee table size book and it's very uh, heavy actually which is good it means that it's, there's quality there uh, the binding is pretty good and here 20 years again of Tomb Raider and every hero has an origin cool every legend has history and every icon an impact the really cool words right there and this uh, was actually uh, published by Prima Games, where PrimaGames.com is the one that actually did the whole thing. When it came out, the price was pretty good. Nowadays, it's just going for crazy prices online. Uh, of course, Square Enix involved in this, and Crystal Dynamics, which, you know, they're the companies that own. Uh, Square Enix owns the rights for Tomb Raider. After removing the dust jacket, you can see here, there is, of course, an introduction in 1996. That's when it was, of course, Lara Croft, the first game was introduced. And here is a picture of the writer, who is a, a, a Megan Marie. Uh, Megan Marie, it's um, she's been involved in uh, in um, cosplaying. Uh, she's a cosplayer, one of the first cosplayers that got really famous for a while, uh, for for really a while. She was really uh, a, a big, I would say, a pillar for that community. Uh, I do follow some cosplayers. I don't follow cosplaying as a whole. You know, I, I do follow some of them, particularly the ones that I always found to be very classy in their style and they do all kind of things and games and they, they really, you can see that passion. Uh, and uh, there are other ones, of course, that they just, you know, they just there just for attention. But uh, I think she is one that I really have admire as a cosplayer because of the way she does the classy looks of the things she does. She's very good at it. But she's been, she's not only that, not only a cosplayer, she's been involved in gaming, she's been uh, working for big companies as a, you know, as a spokesperson, uh, she's a writer. This is what's actually her first published book, and uh, I know that she just uh, is working on a new project uh, that is going to be published, it's Women in Gaming, uh, she fin finalized it, I think I saw the post this week where she was uh, very saying, you know, that she was happy that she ended the project. Has the same design in the inside, but this is uh, silver and which is cool it's the same book there's nothing in the back it's just white but just some of course some the, the barcode but let's go let's dig in into this book which i consider a, a good good job i think uh, megan marie did a phenomenal job with this book but i like this part here there is a collage of so many different versions pictures uh anything that has to do with tomb raider so very nice intro to really give you a big picture of what tomb raider has been as an icon for the industry, you know, in the industry of gaming and also as a pop culture icon. Here you see there's the intro, of course the original game's very cool, and here is the more modern take. There is, uh, I, I love that, the, you know, it has, oh, I love the books when they come always with a table of content, and very specific uh, with the page where you where you can find it. And I love that actually the, the way that this this book was formatted was pretty good. It was decent, decent, and not only a decent, it was a great job. And of course, you got a note from the author where she explains how, you know, Lara Croft has impacted her life. And of course, it's divided in sections. The first section is about video games, uh, which should be the first thing. And it starts with the story of Core. Core was the company that created Lara Croft. Core is an English company. 
no longer in existence if I'm not mistaken but they did they, they the, how everything came so it has an origin story how they came how they of course everything evolved to idos you know when they were actually kind of partner with them or, or, or purchase or they, it was something has to do with Idos kind of took over them uh, you know they um, because they were just a small developer company and how core kind of defined this and of course it goes to the birth of Lara Croft the first game this book contains a lot of information so it's not a book about images and I know so some reviewers on, on, on different places saying that they didn't like it because there were not there was a lot of not enough pictures a lot of you know a lot of story a lot of you know a lot of um, commentary but to me it's just this is what I write a book uh, to me books is about information uh, it's about just you know gathering all that information and providing it with the proper images and I think she did a phenomenal job doing doing so there's a lot of reporting here there's a lot of knows that I didn't know about this character and uh, it's well divided you know has some of that um, initial uh, art and he has a table of contents everywhere with a lot of information for the, of the game and the design and the people involved in it uh, is a phenomenal job. This is Tom Tomb Raider 2. So he goes from game to game to game and he has a lot of information, a lot of pictures. So this is not a book just for you to kind of go through and loss over the pictures of, you know, it's scantily clad, you know, uh, women just dressed up in, in very um, erotic poses. I, that's not the point. I, I don't know. I was just reading someone that was pointing that out that, you know, that was looking at for something more than that. And in my mind, I'm thinking, I think you're in the wrong place. You, you bought the wrong book because I don't know. To me, this is about the, the book, the, the game itself. You know, I'm a Tomb Raider uh, fan. Here's the voices. So he talks about the people that had voice the character over the years for the different games which is cool things like this is cool to me information like this then of course Tomb Raider the last revelation so it's going through all these different games throughout the history of it all these games of uh, what core was involved in it and Ida's were involved in this so it's the first part of the series so the information is there so you can see that really really cool very iconic images of the at the beginning of the this franchise and the gaming part which it really it, the game it was look it was good but one of the greatest things about Tomb Raider was not only how of course having um, the the looks of Lara Croft I think more importantly was the game mechanics and this game really defined and changed the world during that time and you know you're looking at 3D environments where you, their mechanics allow you to do a lot of puzzle solving a lot of traveling it, it was not they were not they were not easy games but they were not games that were so hard to really master uh, if you really put the effort on it and I think that has to be and has to do with everything here's about the manor um, this is the you know whoever knows this character of course this is the where where she lives uh, and the Croft Manor is where you know everything happens so, so many different versions many different uh, variations depending on each game and then of course we went to Tomb Raider Legend, which I really like. I really like actually when when it went to the to the more modern takes. Of course, this there was on the PS2, you know, an Xbox, and then of course went to the Xbox 360, and um, I really like it. And then of course went into the PS3 as the remaster versions. I really like the remasters actually. I did play them, and I really enjoy them. Just they did um, a phenomenal job with the remastering. So a lot of information, a lot of footnotes, little details. Here you have Tomb Raider Anniversary, which was a remake of the original. Uh, really like it. Anniversary was one of my favorite ones. Really enjoyed that one, that game. And here, here you see more more pictures. And of course, you got Tomb Raider Underworld, which for some people didn't like. I did like the the design of the game. I think this is when actually you can see it turn around in the way it was a darker game but the design itself I, I love the everything that they did and I think you can see that how Tomb Raider is evolving into something totally different and experimenting and of course it was bought um, then uh, Eidos um, kind of went to the side um, had to, uh, if I'm not mistaken you know they went into side because of they, they you know they were having money problems so they were bought by Square Enix who actually took the game in a different direction and here you can see more games when they decided with the digital digital initiative so when they started doing more digital games of course you got Lara Croft and the Guardian of Light which I really like this was a total different take but you know to having a more open world from a top side view 
and uh, Adventure Soul the Puzzling. Still feels like a Lara Croft movie, but in a different different light. And I really enjoyed this game. I did, I did like this one. Here you have a section. Uh, the one thing about I like about this to keep it entertaining is that in between uh, uh, chapters there are some different sections, different stories, different things have nothing to do with the, the chapter itself. But it kind of keeps this in, the reading very fun and entertaining. So here you have the models. Uh, the all the girls that have, have been involved, people have been involved in, in personifying the character on you know for the different promo. Uh, so you have different ones here. Uh, a lot of these models, very you know, very known for doing their part for this. And of course, he has a lot of different versions. And he, he gives the story of their lives and how they became, how they were, how they they, they you know have this you know affected their lives and how that you know they they're really proud. And then of course, they have the ship to cosplayer. So it's something that has. It's more common nowadays, of course. Um, a lot of people, a lot of cosplayers, starting actually cosplaying, just imitating Lara Croft. So the impact of Lara Croft as a strong character really is undeniable. So here, a survivor is born. Uh, born. So he, this is talking about the new games, the Tomb Raider, when they kind of revamp the whole thing, which is is a you know really good game actually. I really like it. And actually, like I said in, a, in some video, in a previous video. My daughter, she just loves, she's just a fan. She loves this this character because of this series, because of this game. Um, she didn't care much about it before. I think she saw me probably playing it before, but she didn't care much about it until this came about. So I think that's that's what they were aiming for, you know, for a younger audience. And I think they did a great job. You know, you have to maintain a, a, a franchise alive. You have to keep it alive. It, there's just, there's just there's no other way. And that applies for everything, not only for gaming, but also for, um, you know, comic books and movies. You know, you have to make it fresh for the new generation. And that's something that a lot of people do not understand. Uh, and that goes back to Star Wars, Marvel, DC. You know, you have to bring it fresh for the new generation. You have to speak their language to want to, you want to keep this, um, uh, you know, characters, you know, relatively fresh. And, um, you know, that's just the sacrifices that needs to be made. And so that we have to understand. My generation needs to understand that that you know the people, times evolve we're not as young as we think we are look at this this Lara Croft and the Temple of Osiris and that was its continuation of the the, 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 the previous one which I, I think this is a good one too um, another of the top uh, uh, upside you know the upside down the top down view and of course Rise of the Tomb Raider which uh, around the time this book was published was coming out and that was a really really good game uh, continuing the adventures of Lara Croft uh, very very cool game really like the design you know the information here is vast you know this is not a book that you just go for the images this is a book that is about reading and of course mobile handheld and tabletop gaming so you have a section where it talks about all those different game boy uh different games for different mobile for for cell phones and the you know you know in this case tabletop games so a lot of information, like I said, you know, a lot of information might not be the cup of tea of some people that do not love to read. And, you know, there's a lot of people that don't like to read. But in my case, for me as a whole, as a person that loves reading, this is it. You know, this is the right amount. This is the, the place where you come for information. So if I need information about something, you know, yeah, I can Google it. But I like books because I can go to my library. I can go to my bookcase and grab one book and really read and find the information that I'm looking for. So here's about the music, you know, the score, the people involved in the project. Definitely good. Then it goes to comics and print media, which this is section talks about a lot of the stuff that has been done. And it does it. The, the problem with the, the, the archives is that it doesn't have a concise uh, timeline it doesn't tell you when it was really published which i really find um, not a good idea as you did with as marvel does it tells you the day when these books were published and it gives you more information more insight on the, on the stories the archives didn't have that they only have of course the story the comic books and of course they have the extras you know the the different variant variant covers on the side as extras but nothing more here you have a story how this was created there's an interview she interviews people that were involved in the process you had mean machines uh, the sega 1996 which was actually the first comic story it's in one of the archives in the first archive but of course it's not color here is color then you have the tone tune raider which blade with what's actually the first one the first time, uh, you know, we, we went into into a comic series, and it was a, a in this case a crossover that sh unfortunately is not part of the archives, which I find that shameful. Uh, maybe there was some uh, miscommunication or some not some bad blood between Tomb Ra uh, in this case we had Dark Horse Comics and and Top Cow. Maybe they decided not to be for licensing uh, reasons, but in any case. 
I find that the, it was missing. It's missing on the archives. But here you have a story, so you know Dark Eons, Ions, that this is actually a, a French company, a French uh, comic book that came out before actually the, um, the Top Cow took over um, on the whole licensing, and that's what created the Top Cow run. So it has a big section just for the Top Cow run. It gives you a lot of information. So this is something that I have come uh, for information for my videos here in this book. So this is, if you are a fan, definitely this is one that will complement what you didn't get over there. And of course, it talks about the story acts, the device, them, which is extremely cool. I like that. It has some covers and it tells you the different issues and the different storylines. So explain what the storyline is all about. I really like that this was he included here and how it ends. So it's, it's just, this is a lot of information just in a few pages here. Good. And there's an interview with Andy Park, which I, I said before, I admire as an artist. And of course, there's a you know, continuation on the Andy Park. And then it talks about uh, the, 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 the journeys, series. Then you hear one shots, and here you can see more one shots, you know, stuff that is included on the fourth uh, archive. And here you can go and then crossovers, which are also missing. This is the crossovers with, um, um, you know, with Darkness and other ones. So there are all of these crossovers, uh, Fathom, you know, Monster Wars. So all of this, uh, you know, and, you know, different editions, things like this. This is missing on the book, but here you'll find that information that is missing on the archives, um, which is sad. And of course, there is an interview with Adam Hughes, which I find very interesting. It's a small interview, but it's still an interview, something that the archives don't have. So I really like this just for the fact, just this section alone, just this chapter alone really uh, makes it worth it for me as a continuation, as a plus, as a, an extra to go along with that collection. And of course, then he goes to Dark Horse. You know, it talks about the Dark Horse new series. You know, I've read some of them. They're not such a, I would say, a big fan of it. It, it has the cool moments. It's more geared towards a younger audience, but particularly a female audience. Um, it, you know, it's good. You know, it's not saying that it's bad. Um, and of course, you got an interview with Philip, Sevi or Sivai, and of novels. It goes into the novel. So, you know, here, there's so many, much information, more to know. But there are magazines and books, and, you know, a lot of classic magazines, you know, information, books, things to do. So, you have a vast array of information here. So, if you want to know what books are out there for Tomb Raider, because there's so many. If you go to, I don't know, Amazon, and you try to you Google it, or try to Google it, you're going to find there's so much books and more information. So, where do you go? Here you have that. It gives you year by year, uh, tells you what books or magazines were printed. Then it goes to the silver screen. You know, it talks to uh, Angelina Jolie, too, which, up to me, for a, lot, and for a lot of people, was definitely the best movie, the best movies. They were cheesy, but they were good representation of the character, um, at least the one we grew up with, of course. And, of course, the adaptations from Hollywood. It has a lot of information, interview, how they established this, aesthetics. Uh, Becoming Lara Croft has a lot of pictures in there. Definitely a good book. It really gives you that information, all, you know, how people involved, the, the filming part. There's a lot of great information here. Like I said, many you know, many things. You know, there's pictures, different size pictures. All of this just to give you that information that you need. And um, it really good. I really like it. I don't know. It's just to me, this is definitely the perfect book. Uh, I don't think there's been other book as complete as this one that has done as better a better job. And I'm really bringing things, um, the information together. So here you can see short films and documentaries. So there is uh, most of this are stuff that has been done um, and also stuff that has been done by fans so this is cool you know at different episodes for different uh, uh, shows actually online shows so all of this you know cartoons oh you know it, I don't know it's just it's cool that you know all of this involved in just book and the and of course tributes and cameos things that of course in pop culture have been done you know videos like Spice World you know and you have uh, other movies Compañeros you have Ali McVeal the show you have other others here you know things like the Looney Tunes show which is cool and mentions in Wreck-It Ralph so all of this it really tells you how impactful this character is pop culture icon this is the next chapter and he talks about the evolution of the character how it evolved even the icon the image of the icon from its uh, roots the evolution here you can see from 1996 1999 2003 and this is 2006 2009 and now 2015 so there's an evolution in the character uh, global legacy you know there's so many different articles information uh, even here you can see how uh, you know I like this one you see Lisa Simpson, you know, like a storeroom raider. So, Matt, you know, things like this, you know. I don't know. This is what makes this book such a 
I don't know, a treasure. And, and one of the reasons why it's so hard to get. Um, so unless you want to pay $300 um, on Amazon, you know, be my guest. I, I would not pay that much, but I'm sure that you can find it somewhere. And then it goes a section just for the fans, and it talks about the people, the forums. What books really give that information? This book gives you information about the forums, fan sites, how they were created. It, it points you out because there's so many. I didn't even know there were that many forums online, places where you can go and interact with people that love this character. All of this, it really gives that information. It points you out to the websites. Um, I don't know. It's just good. It's good that you have this. And here's a, the full fan site program. So it tells you the different programs, where to find them, which countries are this part from. I don't know. This is a full list. And it's cool. It's cool that it's here. Localized and cosplayer. So it's a section for that. Now, people were complaining that there was a lot of emphasis on this. And, you know, I can say this because the chapter here is a bit large. And there's a lot of, uh, you know, people that have involved and uh, a lot of cosplayers. Uh, you know, well, you have to keep in mind that this is, uh, Megan Marie was in, in both in this, in this world. She's part of this world. So, of course, you know, she brings her world into the book that she's creating. She is the writer. She is the creator. So, uh, you know, the fact that she does it, um, um, you know, is doing it uh, for, for fun, you know, for her, you know, for the people that she represents. And you know what? I don't have a problem with that. I know some people do. Some people complain about it. But uh, in my opinion, I think it's just another aspect of Lara Croft. And you go to many cons, you're going to find a lot of people dress up as Lara Croft. She has an impact. And, you know, she has created an impact, particularly with a lot of girls. So, you know, it is, to me, it's good that, you know, that this is included here. You know, and it brings a lot of uh, cosplayers. There's more, of course, but a lot of cosplayers from around the world. And some of the most, uh, I would say the best cosplayers in that. There's some missing, I would say, because I've seen others that really have done a great job. But also, different people that, uh, like this, you know, these girls that, you know, they, 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 even with the medical, for medical reasons, you know, they still see uh, Lara Croft as an inspiration. And I think that's why, you know, the characters like these are so important to maintain and keep alive. Not for the eye candy of men, which a lot of men do, you know, I'm not going to say that Lara Croft is a, you know, make her ugly, no, but what I'm saying is that, you know, it's important to, to, to give that strength to people. Also, there is man, which, eh, <laughs> on that end, I, I think I just kind of, um, I just stopped on the lines right there. Um, I don't know. I say, you know, I, I just wouldn't go that far, but I say more power to whoever wants to also be a male version of Lara Croft. I'd rather just play, uh, dress up, I don't know, as the guy from um, Uncharted. I forgot his name just now. But here's another guy. Another guy. Well, dude, more power to you. You feel Raymond Croft. More power to you. He looked good, though. But, uh, you know, it's not my thing. I think just I leave it just for them. I, I, like, for example, like people that dress up, uh, females that dress up as Captain America. And I seem to play dress up as, you know, Pikachu for Pokemon. I don't know. It just, uh, you know, girls dress up in a, in a sexy outfit. It's just it kind of out of place, in my opinion. But these are girls are not trying to change the wheel or reinvent it. They're just representing the character and i give power to the guys that want to do it as well um uh, you know more power to you um uh, to each his own and here you can see there's more stuff more information so there is a lot of information for chris player and of course you know keep in mind this is coming from her which is part of this and goes to fan art where there's a lot of it a lot of people were saying that uh, i used to read that one in amazon review saying saying that there was a lot of subpar art here and to me, I don't consider this support art. I consider this art that comes from the heart. You know, people that are not professionals doing art just for, for the fun of it. And how this art here is involved here, I don't know. If I'm the one that, that has drawn this and my art is included here, I think it's good. It's good that that somebody takes consideration of my passion. So I've, I'm sure that the people that, they, that are here are very proud of what they have accomplished and that they've been taken, people have taken notice. And I think I like that. You know, if you want uh, cool art from Lara Croft, then of course get the archives. You're gonna find all the cool art from professionals. But if you want just something that really gives you, also honors the people that have made this, um, you know, this character an icon, then of course this is the one. And here you can. So it's a lot of 3D artists. It's a lot of different art. So there's a lot of inclusion of this. There are other books from Lara Croft where you can get more art from the different games. Which if you are a big fan of Lara Croft, I'm sure you you're going to get. 
There's fan fiction, which is another aspect of Lara Croft. People that have created different fan fiction, different novels uh, independently. And the fan films, something that you can see a lot of YouTube people creating their own versions. A lot of these videos are super, super cool. And uh, of course, it's all here included, different groups. So I don't know, the information here, to, to, uh, Tomb, uh, Tomb Raider level editor, uh, which was a cool idea, not as good in paper, but definitely allowed to people to kind of create their own world. And I'm sure a lot of people got into gaming design because they were the, for this type of tools. And you can see there's a lot of stuff, craft collectors. And here is a section just for collectors, you know, collections around the world. However, this is not such a big, it has a few collectors, but there's so many out there and I have met and I've seen some Lara Croft collections through friends and Facebook. They're not here, which is a shame because I've seen some marvelous collections out there. Uh, and these are some of the biggest ones or at least most recognized by some of the websites. Like you can see right here, this is actually a, a, already pre, um, um, and the Garden of Light from SciShow. I did um, review this one, so you have probably seen my video. So it's right there, included there, which is cool. And my piece of also uh, of um, of treasure. Uh, I love that statue. But here you can see there's more collections. I, you know, like I said, it would have been great if they have included more collections. But of course, a lot of collections that I know, they're, they the writers stay anonymous, and uh, they just collect. So this is the only thing. One of the things that I, I hate. That, that I hate. I wouldn't say I hate, I would say one of the things that I didn't like about this book, that there was no, there's a lot of emphasis, of course, on the cosplaying part, which for, for reasons I already explained, but uh, it, it's not enough pages just for collections. I would have loved to see more people, more collections. And then this is a, even a section for Tomb Raider tattoos, which is kind of strange, I would say. Um, I was not expecting that. But, you know, more passion for the people, you know, that they want to do it. And there's a section for statues. Another, to me, thing that was missing because there's statues here. There's a couple of small pictures, but there's not enough pictures. And there's not, there are not all the statues that we have. We have, of course, Ida's, the really common statues that was released, Varner Studios, Sideshow Collectibles. You had gaming heads, and we have other statues that were used for the games, things like that. But nothing, I would say... It's missing some statues from Saish, it's missing statues from some uh, uh, French companies that um, I just don't recall right now the names. It, 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 you're, you're missing statues and there's not enough pictures from the statues, which is a shame and it's only these two pages. So if there's missing something, it's collectors and collections, picture of collectors, and it's missing, of course, more information or, or pictures of these companies and their statues and how they design. I think that those are the two sections that are lacking. And of course, there's a list of contributors and a lot of you know people here a lot of information and of course the book ends here now in conclusion do i recommend this book yes i do i recommend it as a compliment to the archives collection this is definitely this will come in handy it has everything to complete the tomb raider, uh, tomb raider uh, collection it has all the information that you need from there but also adds more information for for everything that has to do with tomb raider uh, if you don't have the archives and you don't care about the comics, but you're a fan of the games, it's definitely right up your alley. And if you are love cosplaying and if you are a cosplayer, definitely this is a good book. I think Megan Marie did a phenomenal job with this book. Besides some maybe some things were not were play out not as much. Uh, some things you know were kind of downplay, but um, but you know it, it depends on your perspective. He's a cosplayer, so she's going to emphasize that aspect of Lara Croft. Uh, she is a, a pillar of that community. Uh, me as a collector, in my case, uh, I, I, you know, I prefer collections, I prefer statues, or even uh, action figures that, you know, they were kind of missing from here. Uh, and there's there's a lot of information out there also for that. But, you know, besides those nitpicks, I think the book does the job and does it well. And really gives that information of this icon a pop culture that is just growing larger and larger. Of course, now with the new game, The Shadow of the Tomb Raider, uh, I definitely a lot of people are still fans of it, and a lot of girls are loving the the whole you know the whole game collection, and they're playing the games all the time. And not only that, I think a lot of guys are just playing the games. 
Um, I do play the games. I love the Lara Croft, and I love each game. Uh, and I, I particularly uh, the newer versions. I really like the mechanics, the new graphics, the new storylines. You know, I still love the classic ones. And hopefully, we can see a more mature Lara Croft in the next, I don't know, trilogy or the next series. We'll see. But uh, for the time being, I, I definitely like this this book, and I recommend it. It's hard to find. It's very pricey online. But if you can find it, maybe in a local bookstore, uh, you know, I say go for it. If you find it for the you know the book price it will be a bargain because it's going for 10 times that price so once again thank you for watching this video uh you know please like comment and subscribe don't forget get to hit the notification button so you can be reminded of every single video that comes your way every day so god bless talk to you again bye bye